first of all, thank you so very, very much for coming to this presentation within the framework of the faculty mentoring faculty uh, program, a much more modest one, I'm afraid, since Andy Jones left us uh, last, last year. But we're very happy to have uh, with us today uh, James Carey from the Department of uh, Entomology, um, who in the course of the past year, when we served together on the uh, Recruitment Advisory Committee for the University Library, uh, had some fascinating uh, insights into what could be done, in fact, with technology and with, in fact, a project quite different from perhaps this one in some ways, but not at all in others. Um, he's uh, uh, a recipient of the Office of the President Award for an online uh, teaching project, and his talk today, Electronic Teaching, Interim Perspectives on Developing an Online University GE Course. Without further ado, let me turn it over to Jim. Okay, thanks, <coughs> Winder. Uh, <coughs> so thanks, everybody, uh, for coming. Um, a, lot, a lot of you, I know many of you in the audience here, you know I'm not in high tech per se. I do aging research. I've been here 31 years. It's unbelievable. And, um, but I got into this, uh, I mean, so the, what I'm going to talk about today is, I mean, the focus is the online, that's, that's uh, sort of the uh, second half of my uh, presentation here, but more generally is talking about uh, the uh, 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 video or digital strategy that I think uh, we need to be uh, uh, thinking about here at UC in general, but UC Davis in particular. And uh, I... I want to see Davis, UC Davis, be taking the lead. You know, I see academics is behind the curve a bit. UC is even behind academics, uh, in, that is, in, in general. But, uh, you know, I don't want to just see us catch up. I think we can leapfrog ahead. So I'm going to, so what I'm going to present today, I mean, it's, it's a lot of, uh, I think it's full of uh, a number of ideas. And, um, and also, it's basically to start a discussion here among us. So, um, so anyway. Let me just, so the way I've organized this uh, is that I'm going to start off because this whole thing began with this UC seminar network that I'll uh, describe in just a bit. And uh, then I had just a brief uh, presentation on how to videos and then the main part is going to be in this online course development. So that the way I see this, we have video online use in general. I see the high, t you know, the tech savvy world is out here someplace at the leading edge. But really the everyday world, when you go to uh, you know, you watch the uh, news at night and so forth. I mean, certainly it's electronic, it's uh, video uh, based, uh, much of it. And um, also, I just, uh, you know, this uh, the uh, bin Laden uh, uh, raid and all that business. I mean, even the SEALs had uh, video cams on their helmets and so forth. Then I see the academic world is back here someplace. And I also see even within academics, as you see, is uh, behind, the, behind the curve. And so that, um, so anyway, that's where we are, and I think we need to uh, do something about that. So that, <coughs> for starters here, you know, we all have our tools, and that is the what I call sort of the basic toolkit, and then we have our specialty tools. If you're in math, it might be MATLAB, uh, the genomics, some genomic software. But but all of us have basically Word, we have Excel, we have PowerPoint, and perhaps EndNotes is sort of the basics. But the way I see it is that we need to, uh, the way I see, and by the end of the talk here, we can talk about this, but I see Camtasia, which is a uh, video capture and editing software. I see that as becoming part of the toolkit uh, eventually. And, and it would be good to see it sooner rather than later. And just to give a perspective too, this need for a broader electronic or uh, video strategy, digital strategy, really there's all these different domains we have the seminar capture I'll talk about in just a bit. We have the lecture classroom capture, the outreach, telemedicine. UC Davis is uh, one of the strongest in the country in telemedicine, actually. Video articles are a big part now. This Jove journal, but I also, when you go to a lot of the medical journals, they have interviews of the authors and so forth. It's really uh, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, of course, the web conferencing and then the online teaching, of course, now. Even within many of these domains, there's very little communication. I mean, just take, for example, the lecture or the uh, seminar capture. I don't know who's doing what across campus. It's just sort of piecemeal and uh, the little communication and, uh, or exchange of information. There's no repository where 
uh, where uh, you know these are posted. It's sort of if you have 25 different uh, departments posting uh, seminars, there's 25 different places basically. Okay. So anyway, that's just a bit of a background. So let me just uh, get right into here on the uh, UC seminar network, and uh, this is where it started. So I, this takes about 30 seconds to read and. <coughs> Much of this flows from there, so just read it, and uh, then I'll um, we'll go forward. So many of you know, uh, are certainly aware of this, but uh, the idea was I put this on the agenda for um, this UCOR when I was chairing it as something we do internally. How do we increase synergy across the UC system? And what you know, initially I saw this and, and was promoting it. I still am to an extent in the more narrow sense of video capture for seminars. But again, it's much broader than that. And. Uh, I believe we need some broader concept of uh, uh, video strategy across. So there's the article that came out a year ago, January, or was it January? Maybe it was January. Is that 11 or 10? In any case, there's Greg Miller here on campus, and he was uh, U or the uh, UCOR uh, rep from Davis, then, and then myself. And this is all 10 campuses plus an undergraduate, a graduate, and a staff person. It's really, uh, to get a buy-in at that level was really, uh, I was really uh, happy about that. Now, when you think about the log speaker logistics here, and so we just had a seminar yesterday that I actually captured in ecology, is that you have uh, nominations. First off, you have to have nominations, then you solicit the title, seminar date, and the host from this, you know, the speaker. <laughs> Reservations, create itinerary, pick up, drop off hotel, meet for dinner, you know, all this kind of business. And uh, then you have honorary, especially for some of these, um, you know, high-end seminars, store, lecture, and so forth. They actually get fairly substantial honorarium. Might even, I don't know if they fly out business class or not. But anyway, there's quite a bit there. Then you ask somebody to video, can you capture video capture? Today? Oh, no, this is too much trouble. You know, when you, when you view this in the broader context of all the logistics here and say, let's take 10 more minutes, and not just 10 minutes, I mean, it's sort of part of the... Uh, setting up the seminar, just as I did right here, is that why why aren't we capturing these things? There's 10,000 seminars across the system, and uh, you know, 10% of that, give or take, here at Davis, uh, certainly probably a thousand seminars here at Davis a year. We should be capturing these and putting them online. Also, the uh, uh, graduate students for exit seminars, that sort of thing. It's just a very very little effort. Now, here's an example. I don't know. Maybe some of you did anybody go to this at the Arc? This was about in February 2nd. It's a really famous physicist, and it ran about three weeks in the Davis Enterprise <coughs> uh, uh, for advertising and uh, for a public lecture of this famous physicist. So you can see here, this is a description, where you park, and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, anyway, they brought him in. And then I asked um, um, whether this was video captured, and I said, or they told me the, yes. Uh, but then I went to the website uh, to s look at his capture because my wife and I went to this thing. There were 400 people that came to this thing. Really unbelievable. And so here was the video capture. Uh, this better play. Yeah, good. Okay. This is actually his departmental seminar. Okay, why is this not? How do I turn? Ah, where's the sound here? Okay. Huh. Oh, it was really interesting. The uh, oh, am I going to get sound here? Well, anyway, maybe. It's, but this guy's really smart, really high energy, and so forth. And you can see. I think I may, might have stopped it here. Oh yeah, there he goes. Okay, you can see the shadows and so forth. There's basically a video camera in front of the screen. Okay, so that all this, you know, the distinguished lecture and so forth, and that's what we we get. A, and look, to physics credit, they wanted to capture this. On the other hand, I emailed the chair of that committee, and I said, I think you might be able to do better. And um, so that it's basically ca capturing just exactly what I'm doing right here. And so you can see Roger, Bar this is our seminar series. 
Roger Vargas, Vargas is absent via a person I, I had worked with in the past. And there's the, now this is disappointing, the sound isn't working. This is actually my graduate student introducing him. But this is a screen capture, then you have a picture and a picture right here. And it's basically zero cost because that's what I'm doing right now. Then you can drop this down. I mean, you'll see it in just a second. And so there, actually, there's a speaker. So you have, again, the picture in the picture. You don't want to cover up content here. So once he's done, speaker's done here um, uh, with the sort of the preliminary comments. Then you shrink it down to a picture in a picture, something like this. But there's all the content. And then at the very end, I won't go there. Yeah, there it is. You blow it back up. This all takes about 10 minutes. And uh, then you render the movie and you post it. And uh, so anyway, that's, that's it. So that's in contrast to simply putting a video camera in front of the screen. Okay? Now, what, we're d what ha uh, flowed from the, uh, the uh, article in PLOS Biology that our committee uh, published was that uh, UCTV, which is based in UC, uh, UC San Diego, was, uh, created a new platform they're calling UCTV Seminars. About three months ago, I contacted them in the context of an NIH grant we were submitting and one of some outreach and so forth, and they said, mm -hmm. funny you contact us. We're using that roadmap that your committee uh, created, uh, as a roadmap, rather, for to create this platform. So here it is. This is going to be launched um, very, very soon. It's supposed to be last week or the week before, but they had some issues there, uh, medical and otherwise. But in any case, there you see, I don't know, I guess the seminar is not here. But in any case, we post all these. I've been capturing these. There's a workshop I captured and uploaded. I know I have a little bit of, uh, okay, there we are. So you can see here that it's all campuses, sort by campus, conference, seminar, speaker, and so forth. Um, okay, and then here, the upload, there's uh, put in the metadata, okay. And then right in here, you can actually uh, begin upload, or I mean include this in the metadata, an abstract. And so that, uh, or for that matter, maybe the whole manuscript, but anyway. Now, this then becomes searchable by Google Scholar, so people worldwide can uh, search this and it pops up in the video, and uh, there it is. It's part of the outreach concept for UC, okay? Now, <clears throat> so there's a background on the uh, UC Seminars network. I wanted to mention, uh, and so that about a year ago, I offered a how-to video graduate seminar, but then there were undergraduates involved as well. and. Uh, you know, the, with the idea that uh, we're just still not using video, that is in academics, the way we could. And so that we created a concept here for how to uh, make an insect collection. This is protocol has been worked out to the nth degree, so this really worked well. But it would apply to any number of uh, concepts across campus for outreach, for example. We, we're targeting uh, these for the high school biology uh, students uh, making an insect collection. So they make basically a playlist like this, each one. In nine minutes they can play each one of these, I mean all of these together and know how to make an insect collection by, by the way, one of the top entomology uh, you know, departments in the country. You go to the web and it's all just garbage out there. It's sort of these crazy people trying to, you know, I mean it's just uh, strange. There's no good, you know, sort of collection like this. And so, for example, boy, it's disappointing I don't have the sound. This says, Department of Entomology. Okay, how to make an insect collection using nets. I just, I made clips out of this, so it's not the whole thing. But this is basically baking a cake. Have the ingredients, which I just showed, or the equipment. Then you do a few things like this. Okay, pretty good, huh? Okay. <laughs> And um, anyway, then they, you know, go to the kill jar and then the end for more information, <coughs> okay? You get the idea there. Here's one that Corey Craig made. <coughs> and uh, I see uh, Karen yeah. Andrews and uh, Sandy and uh, Corey are here. But uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, the all the videos are on, the library videos are on the uh, library webpage. No, that's right. That's yeah. right. And so you don't need to spend $50,000 for this. You can make them right on your own laptop and then post them. So anyway, here's a how-to. Uh, and I use this, by the way, in my course. I post this for my students. And um, so anyway, there's that. Okay, I get that out of the way. And now let's go to the online uh, course development. Now, about, what, 03, I developed this course. It's a long story. I'm in entomology. I teach this course. I won't go there. But anyway, I do, I do teach it. 
and uh, this quarter there's 177 students in it. And uh, uh, anyways, terrorism and war. And this, as uh, Winder uh, noted, has been a, was approved as one of the 29 online courses. I, I'll give a stat here, but look, online courses. Online courses. This is a 48 billion dollar industry. Four to five million online students. 12 percent growth per year in contrast to two percent growth in um, for just <coughs> conventional courses. Just for the University of Phoenix, 500,000 students. You know, President Udoff said that, well, about this program, uh, it might fail, but at least we can't seed the ground. But I say, it cannot fail. How can it fail? It's clear that there's demand for online courses. It's a matter of figuring it out. Other places have, and we need to. So that one of the problems with online is that you have an image problem due to the reputation of colleges that first adopted. It's sort of horror of horrors. University of Phoenix, we don't want to be anything like this. Well, uh, the thing is, they, they did figure something out uh, before that, but uh, before the you know public university, private, uh, and so forth. Uh, but this is just where the future is. Now, here's an example at Penn State. <coughs> just look at this. Penn State Online, they're, they're one of the leaders here. And so that online degrees, so on and so forth. Look at this, military. Uh, educators, corporate options. Look at all these graduate degrees here, all of them online. And uh, so that we take a look at this. That is so disappointing that I'm not getting sound. Uh, I, this isn't going to do us. Why am I not getting sound? Jen plug, you have the cable plugged in? I do. Just unplug it and I want to hear your laptop. Maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. Welcome to Penn Well, that's it. You probably can't hear it. But I'm telling you that this is a really a, a just a compelling promo. And, uh, you know, they bring in their alums and so forth. And the thing is, they note that you beat with an online degree at Penn, you're a Penn, on, you're a Penn alum. And uh, so that, um, anyway, they're just one of the leaders there. There's no question. Okay, background for the youth, for the course. Funding, uh, you know, there it is, 750 from uh, from Gates and Hewlett, 6.9 million. I think this was borrowed or something. Is that the controversy? Anyway, there's 29. Oh, sorry, this is what uh, Dan Greenstein submitted. There are 29 out of 600 grants that were funded nationwide. So it was UC OPs that uh, was funded. It's really good. There's academic senate endorsement, and then of ones. Uh, I sent in and a colleague at uh, postgraduate school and uh, Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey. We sent in, and so we're one of the 29 here. Now, there's the 29, and there's actually five from Davis, and I think there's five from UCLA, but the others, are, there's fewer. So there's a good, really good representation here at Davis. There's uh, the one mine right in here, but anyway, there they are. Okay, and uh, let's see. Now, I know I've talked to uh, Rosemary and uh, others. Uh, uh, you know about course development and it seems like so I have in, in sort of working through this myself I've come up with sort of another uh, way to uh, at least sequence and I understand the importance of course design strategy but I think uh, that the first step is simply course content which is to say the content we have in a course uh, that we have that is a face-to-face -face course the traditional courses and then and so that once you settle on that which is to say just develop a good course with uh, good pedagogy and all that business then identify the delivery what I call the delivery mechanisms and uh, so I, I'm going to go through those and then you develop and these are sort of you know uh, mutually uh, or simultaneously developed but anyway then the course design strategy I just felt we got into the nuts and bolts of the strategy before the delivery here. So what I have here now, and so I'll show that in just a second. So why expand online courses that you see in general? You know, part of the um, part of the um, argument here is to expand access, and I don't know whether that's three percent or ten percent or whatever. But the reality is, and this is why the University of Phoenix is so uh, these kind of for-profit colleges are so popular. Um, is because, guess what? The real world out there, people have to work. They can't uh, make it to Davis or wherever. 
and so that the kids asleep or something and now they can go online and do their coursework or whatever. And so it really is uh, much less the military over in Iraq and Iran and so forth, okay? Alleviate uh, capacity constraints, there's bumping up against, uh, you know, just limits in terms of, uh, you know, fire marshals coming and you can't pack students in, uh, you know, to the gills. Revenue source, I think this has gotten a bad rap here, that is we want to save money and so forth. But, uh, of course, why not? But on the other hand, it still is a revenue source. There's this huge market out there that we're just simply, well, where are we on this thing? Catalyst for institutional transformation, I like this one too. And that is, you know what, it's a new day from when, uh, at least I was in school, and many of you are probably in the, the baby boomer, uh, you know, and so forth. And uh, it's just a different day. And uh, so, and then also imp this improved learning experience, experience. I'll talk about the myths at the end. But I think there's uh, the, this argument that face-to-face -face is always better than online, I simply don't buy. And uh, there's uh, experiences you can have online, I think, that could be uh, much better uh, than face-to-face. Uh, -face. Okay, now, now, here, what I do, I have here, I'm gonna walk through what I call different models of delivery. And um, so the first, and so I go from sort of the most basic uh, to uh, more uh, interesting and uh, uh, innovative. But you know, we all know this one, and that is basically what I call a click-through. There's probably some term for it, but I call it click-through. That is, this one's on doing math, and you, you know, there it is. Then you have some sort of, uh, what is that? Um, you know, the definitions and so forth, right? And then you have some work out some examples, and then you have some problems. So you just click through those. That's the most basic uh, of all. It's like traffic school, right? <laughs> and um, so all you want to do is they just want to burn through that, OK? Now, here's a classroom capture, the second uh, way to deliver. And OK, where is my, there it is. Okay. So today we're going to spend a little this time MIT. Okay, we know this. I'll talk through this. And I'm actually not impressed with this. And there's a lot of hype about classroom capture, but it's basically putting a it's basically putting a uh, camera in a classroom and uh, you know recording like this, and then you can have a you know uh, subtitles and that sort of thing. But see, I mean, uh, okay, we've all seen this before, but then there's a Okay, okay, so there's the big shot, uh, you know, the big uh, perspective right there. But it's basically just a camera in a classroom. Uh, it's not that much, it's a little more sophisticated than the physics example we gave before, but not a, not a huge amount. Okay, now here's another one, and I'll just get through these quickly. But we've seen this as well. It's what I call audio lesson lecture. So this would be French lessons, but there's somebody with an earphone like this that's talking. Where did this go? Okay. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, but anyway, it's somebody you know walking through the French lessons, but you hear an, you have an audio and you walk through that. Okay. Then this is what I call the studio lecture, and this would be like great lectures or um, uh, I think it's great lectures you know one of these commercial things I think this is pretty good and so um, I could okay here's one on art I just did quick clips of this and you can focus in they have these so you can focus in on different parts that sort of thing and uh, so that it's the content is very clear here's one on fractals and uh, the use of the use of uh, good visuals like this to really, uh, you know, uh, illustrate um, illustrate the concept, and um, so I think this is actually pretty good. Okay, you know, get that idea. Now, here's what I call beamed-in expert, and this is just captured yesterday, but I'm using this in the terrorism war course, and it's uh, it's. Um, with the Naval Postgraduate School, I have a colleague there that's really taken an interest in this, John Arquilla, uh, one of the really premier scholars in terrorism. And, uh, he's, in the, he's chair now of the uh, uh, Defense uh, Strategy Department, something like that. It's not quite it. And, uh, but in any case, 
this is beamed in. I have a series of slides here. And this would be me just yesterday. And it's a different uh, speaker. He had one of his colleagues give a talk on the Arab Spring, basically. It's just like having a military briefing in, uh, for these students. And so now we have it set up. So we've connected down in Monterey and uh, still kind of milling around students coming in. And uh, there he's uh, now giving his lecture. Now here's what it, this would be the feel. And uh, I mean, what it feels like in the lecture. I've got to say, it's really, uh, there's a buzz there every time. Be, it's almost like a, a you know TV production. But they see this picture in picture, oops, sorry. There's a picture in picture there where he sees the entire um, auditorium. And he can say, okay, the person in the green shirt, go ahead. And here's, they're running around, that's a TA running around with a microphone. And uh, so there he is again. But I've got to say, I mean, this is the first experience I've had with this, but I, I'm impressed. And, the, you know, it has a huge presence here in the, uh, in the room. And he can see, as I said, he can see all of, there's a picture in picture right there. He can see all the students. And, uh, and their students are really, really engaged. So that's what I call the uh, uh, beamed in expert. And uh, I believe that this could be used a lot more, probably with Skype. And the advantage here is that, uh, the advantage here is that you don't have to bring in a guest lecture and pay for, the, okay, they're coming up from Berkeley or much less some farther away. Say, so, okay, well, clearly they're gonna lecture the entire time. If you beam somebody in, you could have a ten, five minute, you could have a 10 minute commentary, okay? Now, here's a distinguished speaker. This is Ted, you've seen this. By the way, this person is speaking in my class. He was uh, Parag Khanna, really, he could be at the Mandavi, Mandavi Distinguished Speaker uh, series. Now see, this is, this is not uh, video, you know, this is clear content. It's like a, a PowerPoint capture, that clear. Now, I'm gonna stop it right there, stop it there a minute. And I think this is the future, I wanna talk about the future of classroom capture too. And uh, that would be, so here's the uh, visual up here, a flat screen, but in fact, uh, they can use that, uh, you know, so that fills the screen just as we saw, so it's just crystal clear, the content's crystal clear. They're not trying to capture both at once, we give context here. And uh, so anyway, there's some ideas there for, uh, I think, for future classroom capture. And, um, okay. How to write an A-plus term paper. Okay. Citations. Oh, yeah. I just made this. Citations this would be technical how to. to obtain the information, the concepts, and the ideas for your term paper. The structure and content of a citation for a journal article include the authors, the year, the journal article title, the journal, the volume, and the page numbers. There are many types of references, the most common of which include the journal, the book, the edited book, a book section or chapter. I'm going to stop right there. So this runs a minute 30, and uh, this is part of a broader um, uh, playlist that I'm going to be uh, developing here. This is just a first draft of uh, one part here. But the, the idea that there's a lot of different um, sort of technical parts of all any course that can be recorded here, again, putting on a pair of uh, earphones and a uh, microphone and uh, simply walking through something like this. You can really pack in a lot of information in a short time. This, you take you know, a minute 30, uh, the students have commented, it's like there's so much information here in just a minute 30. And then, of course, then you can have references to get information elsewhere, okay? Now, of course, we can get on the field trip. This is, this is the idea that you can do things with uh, video and online that you can't do uh, with face-to-face. -face. You can't take the entire class out to the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, rookery or whatever, okay? Okay, I'm gonna, here's an interview concept that I used. And I captured this off of uh, Conversations with History. This is Philip Bobbitt, one of them, just a really profound thinker here. And I played this in my class. It took about 10 minutes. But I captured this because it's reading the, uh, it's the uh, Shield of Achilles, and I draw a lot from that. 
and then you can put in as major points right in here that you walk through and uh, so forth. So these little clips um, I think are uh, one thing I'm uh, beginning to use more and more. It breaks up the lecture so it's not just a one droning on for 50 minutes. I mean this is actually a period and a half. And, uh, but that's really a clear image, isn't it? So let's go to, okay, here's one, and the second to last one. This is what I call the, what do I call it, video message board. And when the students come into the classroom, just like when you go into a movie theater, uh, you know, you have sort of Starbucks and then Ace Hardware and you have, uh, you know, all these advertisements. And I thought, you know what, I can do that. And so that um, I have these playing as the students come into the auditorium, and um, not all of them are sort of full of content like this. I, I'm actually a collector of quotes, and so I have a lot. I have a number of quotes. But John Arquilla had a um, an article in New York Times that I put on one of these one time on the uh, reducing the defense budget. And uh, what do I have here? <coughs> Military bans. See if, I, see if there's one more there. Okay, yeah. Okay, anyway, so I get into that. Um, okay, now the last one I have an example would be now this just uh, Hilly, or sorry, not Hilly Kaplan, but uh, Michael Gervin from UCSB gave a talk just yesterday in the ecology seminar, which I captured. And so that you could be, this obviously can be online or it can be in the class, but you have, um, so I do longevity and aging, and in fact I know their work well. So that here you might have a paper, uh, Population Development Review, and here's Michael Gervin right there, Longevity Among Hunter-Gatherers. Now, so that you can go there, here he is. And so you can pull out a clip from his talk where he's talking about this very thing and uh, integrate that into your online course or uh, into your lecture. And so then, then the students know who the author is, but also the author brings such authority to that uh, paper. I mean, to that, uh, you know, the concepts or whatever that, uh, so anyway, there it is, okay? So those are my, those are my, um, we'll try to get done in about five minutes. We have plenty of time to t uh, just uh, discuss. But, um, but anyway, now, you get into course design, and I saw this uh, uh, in some paper, maybe uh, Rosemary might have given it to me, but uh, in any case, this is how sort of a framework to think about the course design where you have expository, active, interactive, and it could be synchronous, that is real time uh, and so forth, versus asynchronous for each one of these, and I, mean, I haven't filled these out yet, but what I the way I've approached this online, first, for one thing, I'm teaching this course, so I'm up to my ears right now. Uh, to, it's hard to develop that online in great detail, but I'm learning a lot. Uh, but anyway, the idea that you have good content and different ways to deliver it, and then you've got to get into these sorts of things about, uh, you know, these kinds of details. Now, the, what I am thinking about here for this online course, and every online course, uh, is going to have its own idiosyncrasies and uh, obviously one size does not fit all. But here's how I'm thinking about it and that is that you have a live lecture and it could be a marquee speaker like this Prague Khan or John Aquila from Naval Postgraduate School but main you know speakers that talk about the Arab Spring or the eruption of the week something like that or just deep concepts about religion and uh, violence you know that sort of thing. So anyway so that, uh, anyway, then you'd have what I call a pedagogical lecture. This might be more with the headphones and you're walking through the basic principles. So this, you have a structure for the course. Then I use DVDs like Fog of War and uh, Battle for Algiers, that sort of thing in part. Then of course you have readings, and then a term paper, and then chat or discussion. Now, different models, that might be for, that would be four credits, that's what I offer right now. But now you have different variations here. This would be the core. But now you could, and the readings would be, but you could have different variations on whether you have a term paper and or a discussion and so forth, and that would vary the, uh, vary the uh, number of credits. So that's how I'm thinking about that. And then each one of these would have different delivery uh, uh, 
mechanisms, okay? Online learning, some of the, uh, I, I'm not going to dwell on this, but it's part of what I put in my proposal here of different ways uh, to, you know, interactions and delivery and so forth. And uh, what do we have here? Uh, wiki groups you can make, open source textbooks. I see, honestly, I see um, the classroom of the future where the instructor might bring in an iPad, a tablet, and it'll be next generation or two iPad type, a tablet, and, um, and that's it. And I'm going to talk about having a webcam here in every classroom that they didn't even have to bring in their webcam, okay? Towards a, let's see, what do I have here? Um, yeah, I'm going to skip those for now. Okay, oh uh, yeah, but I won't skip that. I got so irritated with this quote. You know, Jim wants us all to be on YouTube. You know, this, is, this captures everything I think that's wrong. <laughs> with, um, with uh, I gave this to the chair, a chair meeting in Neil Van Alphen's, and anyway, a couple weeks later, I was at a mixer or something, and, and this person, go unnamed here, came up and said that. It's like, oh boy, this is what's wrong with it, because uh, it is not about being on YouTube. It's a better, we need video literacy, digital literacy, uh, among across the board here, as I see it. And uh, that's why academics is way back here someplace, and the rest of the world is out here someplace, okay? Now, the way I see this is that for uh, just the, that is, you know, it's like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, and so forth. Camtasia, I see, or something like it, but I see Camtasia as the, um, as uh, really sort of the standard in the industry right now. And then a simple webcam, although this is a very good one, by the way. I mean, it's not that expensive. That's one right here. But it has a mount here on a tripod and uh, captures audio just beautifully uh, as well. And so that here's an alternative. I see the classroom capture as not having a camera in every uh, uh, lecture hall. I think that's last generation. And just like you saw the MIT and you can go to Berkeley, we all know those, uh, you know, open access lectures and so forth. You want the content crystal clear like with a TED lecture or like what we're capturing here with, uh, with our uh, seminars. And so that, for example, instead of outfitting all the classrooms, every instructor has Camtasia on their computer that they use for their lecture and they simply click record. And then at the end, click stop. That's it. And then it's uploaded and you can, just like they're doing at UCTV, you don't have to render them or anything, the movies. They can do that automatically as long as you upload. You could even have a, you know, a slide that goes in to say course, lecture 13, date, uh, whatever it is and so forth. For that amount of money, you could have 500 licenses. I mean, the more you get, the cheaper the license. Uh, and then webcam, say 100 of these, and so for $25,000, you have um, UC Davis, uh, you know, did, uh, uh, what, digital literate, uh, at least in the classroom. I see that as a new concept for classroom capture, not going back to the uh, camera in every, every one. Okay, I think that's it. So I like these, this, George McBundy, uh, you probably know him as the Kennedy administration. But, uh, I, you know, this online learning, any way you cut it, we're still a university, it's about learning. I love that quote. And um, by George Bundy, he was a dean at Harvard as well. And then I just ran across this one as well, no longer be incremental, it must be fundamental and structural, is that we can't just sort of, you know, tiptoe into this online, you've got to embrace it. And uh, same thing with the digital more generally. So, uh, okay. So uh, that's, uh, that's uh, what I have here. So uh, thanks. And, uh, <laughs> so good. It's a good time to uh, have discussion here. Well, we've got about 20 minutes. I'm sure there some folks would like to pose a few questions. How do you handle testing and evaluation? Mm -hmm. The on an online in, no, 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 no. well we have take in this one we have take home so that um, we have take home exams so that they would write it and submit it online we have many essays I probably should have gone into some of this but I have many essays where I require them to write 25 words in response to a question that uh, flows from the reading and uh, so they can't be over 25 and uh, so they've really got this is very difficult we all know how hard it is to really capture this. 
And so that would be uh, another one. I have, I suppose you could have time quizzes and that sort of thing, but uh, you know. You have so short, uh, short uh, term paper or essay? No, it's uh, yeah, on top of that we have a term yeah, paper, you that's do. exactly We've right. Been seeing your yeah, students. that's right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so th that's what this course would be. But I know that there's a lot of online. My daughter's over at Sac State. She was called up last night and said, I can't talk too long, Dad. I'm on a timed uh, final. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, they have these sorts of things. Yeah. How about security? Are you concerned at all about security? As in cheating? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because one of the uh, professors from Berkeley teaches psychology, which is one of these humongous mega courses any place campus. He said he is not going to be the, um, you know, sort of the uh, judicial affairs police. And he's, and it's like, well, they cheat, they cheat. And I thought, well, boy, that's an interesting attitude. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, how do, how is cheating handled on, online? There are or a lot prevention, of, rather. Pardon? Uh, there are several different ways of approaching it. Uh -huh. um, some people find that when you have more student activity, student engagement with each other and with the instructor during the course, um, they learn the material better and they don't mm. cheat as well, as much. Yeah. Other people find that cheating occurs at about the same rate as in yeah. a face-to-face -face class. Other people have face-to-face uh, -face or in-person proctored exams, whether they come here to the campus or whether they go to a library yeah. or a church. Uh, and there are even proctoring software that can go on, can be loaded on a computer that locks the screen and timing. Uh, I'm, I, I haven't explored that one as much. I just learned about it myself. But a lot of people solve it through um, proctoring and careful design of tests and assignments and interaction. Throughout. So if you're a soldier over in Iraq um, and taking calculus, um, I don't know how this works. But clearly, I mean, my goodness, uh, I don't have the answer to that, but clearly this online is a huge industry out there, and even like Penn State, is that I, I guess I'm confident that there's, they have this worked out, and I just need to find out what it is. But I'm more, most concerned about just come bringing together a really good course, and then you get in the mechanics of the cheating and that sort of or whatever, or prevention of, yeah. How is enrollment um, done? I mean, usually in most use of campuses, you have to be accepted to the campus, yeah. and so, how does this get, uh, how do you work it out in this kind of system? For the university course? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Well, um, who is are they like talking? extension? Well, no, no, no. It's a regular course. You know, Dan Greenstein was just saying the other day when I was on the phone with him, he was saying, in a way, all, uh, right now, all you see credits are, uh, you know, transferable within the system. And so it's a matter of the mechanics of if Berkeley student takes my course right here, that uh, it's just like if he or she had come up here and enrolled. And so what they're trying to do, I mean what they're going to do, is develop a university course catalog that's approved by the, UC, by the, uh, what is the UC, uh, what's the acronym for that, Education Policy Committee, you know, Academic uh, Senate. And so that it wouldn't go through every single campus to be approved, it'd go through the uh, Academic Senate Education Policy Committee to be approved as a university course. And then all the mechanics of, uh, you know, tuition and uh, uh, what the uh, uh, TAs and so forth still have to be worked out. So all those mechanics, I'm not so sure you'd about. you'd have to be accepted within the UC system yeah, yeah. it's available to students within the UC system. That's correct. But, <coughs> but they're interested, as am I, in this course, that by you could license it uh, to others. You could have, uh, that's why I had all these different models here, but any number of courses could be packaged that way where that some might just be interested in the lecture part and forget the term paper, forget that, so that they could take the same, you know, the same material, but in fact uh, used, you know, in different ways or whatever. And um, so that, yeah, this could be, they're, they're really interested. I mean, you have this vast community college and, and uh, Cal State system that has uh, a lot of potential. By the way, I mean, as I think, uh, through this too. I was talking to uh, Pete just a couple of days ago, a great conversation about it. But um, why not have a course of 5,000 students, you know? I mean, why not? If you had a, uh, you know, like these, uh, what do they call them, studio lectures, and you invested a lot of uh, resources and time and so forth, 
in developing the best way to present this material. I mean, it might be really deep material too, of course. And uh, so that all students across the UC system could take that, and it could be in, you know, synchronous. Then, uh, so why not, For in principle, you'd have the best instructor, the best uh, resources to really present this in the clearest possible way. That frees up, that doesn't, you know, uh, replace the professors on each of the campuses, but it frees them up so that they can have small courses and teach more, you know, 20 and 30 students or maybe even a dozen students. So uh, it seems to me that that concept uh, needs to be uh, explored as well. Yeah, a neighbor, uh, a neighbor here. So. Yeah, right. Uh, I know that uh, you've taught this course for many years in a, in a more traditional yeah, method, yeah. and right. you are now working on right. on this new Correct. method. Uh, what plans do you have for evaluating the the effectiveness of this method right. versus the previous one? Great question. How can you do? It? Is that uh, one? I was wrestling with uh, how many TAs to ask for next year because I was going to take it all online. And so uh, David Ritchie, who's in charge of the uh, uh, Science and Society program, is like, I don't know. If I go online, there might be like 10 students and uh, so forth. But here's what um, emerged from that discussion, and that is, and maybe it was Dan Greenstein, and that. I'm going to next year, I have 175, so it's right up bumping up against kind of, you know, ballpark demand. 100 traditional, 75 online. So right there, this will be uh, an experiment. And so even if I get a, a couple dozen that take it online, we'll see, uh, we'll have information. And he's really interested in that because just online alone, you don't have a comparison. So. There's a web page called No Significant Difference. Uh, which <coughs> has done studies, a great many published studies that show between online and uh, lecture mode, uh, mm -hmm. traditional, that there is no significant yeah. difference in the in performance. Yeah. But I, I would like to raise one point. Sure. Um, nowhere in what you presented is there any reference to assignments and feedback. And I consider those essential. Uh, the students who have taken right. my classes online universally say, I've gotten to know you better right. than I did a lecture professor. Yeah, yeah. Well, clearly they're going to be there. I'm just not there. I sort of set myself up, uh, you know, for that, uh, maybe that criticism, but uh, I tried to preempt it some by just saying that I focused on the delivery because I think that uh, this workshop we had. Well, Kirk was down there at Berkeley. It seemed like we focused on the nuts and bolts and we had breakout sessions. I mean, the nuts and bolts is sort of like, okay, this is how you have a discussion board and that sort of thing. When we had breakout sessions, everybody wanted to take everybody else's course. I mean, they're just passionate about the course. It was really interesting and I lose sight of the real content here. And a sort, and so that you immediately get into all the mechanics of uh, even the evaluation, but clearly, this is uh, an important part, and the interactions. Now, with that said, the discussion boards, um, I was talking to somebody and they have mixed feelings. It's almost like a blog, that you go to any blog wherever out there, it's just sort of this drivel, you know, it's just kind of go through, and the trouble is you have to go through it all. And so um, I have to think about uh, how we're gonna handle that sort of thing. But, Dick, I mean, clearly that's an important part of this whole thing. I just haven't worked out all the details. Yeah. I thought, I thought you had a question. Me? Yeah. Well, I, I teach uh, online classes sometimes at National. Uh -huh. And uh, my experience is uh, they learn a lot. Uh -huh. We don't have any time constraint. I cover right. both. I cover two textbooks. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, we have all the online tests, quizzes. Uh, right. What's the course? E economics. Economics, I see. Mm -hmm. Intro or? Uh, no, MBA. MBA, I see, yeah. Look, another thing, uh, so, no, I mean, that's, that's great. It, it just has kind of a bad rap here, but I, I'm thinking, you know, there's different kinds of courses. We always talk about UC quality and that sort of thing, and I think some implicit in that is that the instructor's up there inspiring this next generation and so forth, and, you know, that's part of it. But part of it is like traffic school, you know? You just want to burn through this. And so there's not all courses are the same as in let's inspire. 
is that they just want to learn Spanish or French or the calculus or something. I mean, and so that, uh, you know, uh, and so that I see um, this online that some of that is just come up with the most efficient way to kind of walk through this and get, you know, the students. And um, this idea of inspiring students at, for, in every course, I think, is kind of misguided. Um, so when I was getting my library science yeah. master's yeah. degree, there's a big move in the professional schools and library science schools to have provide online degrees, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and those programs have varied. Some of them require on-campus residencies, mm -hmm. and so that's a whole cohort right. of graduate students, and they right. come for a week, and they hang out on campus. And there was thought in our program that sort of provided the in-person bonding and face-to-face -face time, mm -hmm. and then you would go back and mm -hmm. be online. Do you have thoughts on that? about? Like providing an in-person component and an online component, or sure. All I mean, online? all the above. But I mean, if you're in Iraq, it's one thing. Uh, you probably can't do that, you know. Mm -hmm. And I use that as an extreme case. But um, I think, you know, that I guess maybe this is going to be a response to the economics. Is though online is some sort of uh, all online courses are the same. I mean, you have. That's why I sort of laid out. You have that click-through, that's traffic school kind of thing. Uh, to uh, this great lectures or the TED type lectures and so forth. And so uh, even with the uh, in-person versus the strictly online, I think it's all of the above. That uh, you could have hybrid courses, you could have online degrees where they never meet. With Penn, they have, uh, or Penn State rather, they bring in a student for graduation. And so they have a big ceremony. These instructors have never met the students before, and they haven't met each other, and uh, so there it is. You know, I mean, the and furthermore, you know, in a lecture hall, it's like with online or this beaming in from Monterey. If you have a lecture hall of a few hundred students, the average student really doesn't ask a question. So whether you have two hundred or two thousand, it's kind of there's no difference there. You know? And uh, so, yeah. Sandy. Is there going to be oppor more opportunities for them to interact in small groups or things like that? Because that yeah. would give them the, and they could work with the TA, no. because that would give them Absolutely. the feeling of being face to face and yeah. they would get to know each other, which yeah. is one of the problems with online. No, I mean, I thought about th <laughs> that is that we have a Marine in my class. I mean, there's always military that take my class. But, um, he is uh, sort of real right wing, and uh, it's actually good because uh, in discussion they uh, interact. Now, where I was headed here is that if you had an online class of several hundred students, you can almost just randomize that. And if you had a few from Iraq and if, you know even international, you mix it up so that you have really interesting, not you know not groupthink like-minded types. The really interesting uh, discussion groups uh, within that. There's just huge, you know, vast possibilities for for that kind of interaction. So, Pete, you were going to ask a question. Too. Yeah, um, this is great. I love the presentation. Um, maybe eight, ten years ago, I think it's project part of Project Merlot and things like that. A lot of people were talking about courselets. So this notion that Co course what? courselets that people courselets. would be developing yeah. um, <clears throat> these wonderful programs, and I might see something wonderful in your course and say, I just want to pull that Correct. piece out. How much thinking is there in the context of the whole the, the UC-wide program, but also in your thinking about some of the great components where someone Absolutely. might say, um, I, I have an economics course right. on, you know, so world economics, it's not really this area, but this needs to be a part of it. Absolutely. No, I mean, that's what the liquid library concept. By the way, I looked up liquid library last night. I, I got this term, it was a New York Times article a number of years ago about the liquid library and then the library of libraries. But it's like you don't want the whole recipe book, you just want the recipe yeah. there and so forth. Anyway, it, it took me to some uh, wine wine barn kind of place. But, anyway. but, uh, but no, I mean, that's exactly, yeah, is that like the Michael Gervin <coughs> lecture on the uh, uh, you know indigenous people and so forth. You take a snippet out like that. And I could see they have the, the e-textbook and so forth, mm -hmm. looks like an iPad. You know, and you're reading through this where they cite Michael Gervin, boom, you have a little mm -hmm. sidebar, electronic sidebar that brings that lecture up. And furthermore, uh, this is why when Pete and I talked, I was saying, get the higher, uh, you know, administration behind this sort of thing because 
UC Davis, I mean, when they start coming up and they're integrated into textbooks like this because, you know, you can just go there easily to UC TV seminars and pull these kinds of things out. That's where UC Davis brand gets out there and so forth. We can be a leader here and uh, just get on the get on the stick. Somebody got a question? Yeah. Uh, I, I too found that this was fascinating, and um, I think a lot of us who are faculty, we think about, well, you know, this would be really hard. I'd have to yeah. change the way that I think. Correct. Um, we worry about it watering down the, the learning experience. But one thing we have to remember is that our students are already well engaged in this sort of learning, That's right. whether they're getting any kind of leadership from us or not. Yeah. You know, uh, I work with an assistant, and um, she's had to learn a, a good number of software programs. And I said, well, do you want me to buy you a manual? And she said, no, I, I have all the um, video tutorials that I need online. And they don't come from uh, the book companies, right? They come right. from That's YouTube right. and, and enterprising people <laughs> who through kind of crowdsourcing and voting, people say, well, well, these are the experts. And they're not often uh, PhD experts, but rather people who can explain very well something with the video tutorial. That's right. Our students are well uh, practiced at right. learning this way. Yeah. And so I, I think you're right that um, there, are, there are a great number of uh, opportunities that we should take advantage of, of giving them a, um, that chance to, to learn substantively from experts. Uh, rather than from just whoever seems to do yeah. it well on YouTube. I'll tell you what, video is not frivolous. This really, that's why that, that comment by that chair really bothered me. Because this is a powerful learning tool. It really is, I mean, to have this animation. And uh, rather than just read a cookbook or something, I mean, it's like, that's why these cooking shows, you know, how to cook. So, uh, Winder, yeah. i just like to, to augment what Andy was saying with respect to uh, actually, some of the things you've alluded to, the opposition that is there towards this type of hybrid learning, um, online learning, uh, blended learning, and so on, if, in fact, those people who have something of a knee-jerk reaction <coughs> against this could understand that it's going to really be generated more from below than from above, that the expectations will be the expectations of the next coming generation of students, uh, which uh, people, I think, at the at the top also are beginning to see right. that that's the case. That's why you have, for example, this uh, this uh, impetus to give grants, to give mm -hmm. uh, ways to do. By the way, a couple of observations. I think also here, uh, Rosemary, I believe, told me that uh, the average attention span is about seven and a half minutes or something like that, some <coughs> attention giving of, of a student in a face-to-face -face, uh, course. And here, the vistas are opened That's left right. and right, yeah, in fact, absolutely. floodgates for doing that. I found that even in something as, uh, and it, it does not use all of the things that you have, a film studies course that I have, for example, just changing from an interview by Christopher Fraley in London to right. a segment from a, uh, from a film, a featurette, and right. so on. Uh, for the hour and 20 minutes that they're there, they're not sleeping. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, the more variety that you can have, the more, um, uh, different approaches and, and avenues and so on. This has changed. It yeah. is marvelous. And finally, the iPad tablet that you mentioned, I actually saw when I went to review a, an upper division German class with about 25 people in it, the instructor was using an iPad, used that throughout the entire course. Right. It worked beautifully. Right. Now I see an iPad where this could, a camera just like that, a webcam, could be on a gooseneck on the podium. And uh, so the instructor comes in and uh, plugs in uh, the computer, the laptop, has Camtasia right there, plugs it into that, maybe does a little adjustment, probably not, and just captures that, clicks record, at the end of it clicks uh, stop, uploads it, boom, it's uh, automatic uh, and so forth. And you can upload it to SmartSight, don't you? It, yeah, I mean, it'd have to be rendered. But anyway, but you know, upload it to have a cover sheet and that sort of thing. I see. And so it's not like that physics lecture, which is sort of, you know. And um, so, so anyway, I, I see something like that. Uh, I'm going to make some other point here. But um, oh, yeah, I know the attention span thing. We've got probably 30 seconds here. But uh, <laughs> speaking of attention span, yeah, um, um, no, I mean, my life, this is a period and a half. And I've really uh, uh, changed my approach because, you know, it's not just students have an attention span people in general. And you know the TED lectures, uh, lectures are 18 minutes, no more. This is a good, good number, a uh, good time. But I mean, you have a standard lecture, 
but even there you can bring in a six minute video that I captured uh, someplace, you know, and then you can go to, well, then we beam in, you can't do that every time, but beam in Naval Postgraduate School. And it really makes it, the period just goes very quickly. Yeah. Stu students have commented about that, it's really engaged. Well, I don't think you have to worry yeah. about the attention span here, uh, yeah. Jim. But thank you very, very much. Thank you all very much for coming. It's uh, a nicely attended event, and see you again.